Hello, I'm Peter from Humshake, and these are allegedly records from my life. Hey guys, we're up here with Pete from Home Shake. How are you? Thanks for doing the show. Yeah, no problem. I'm good. Really appreciate it. You, yeah, no problem. Uh, tell us what's going on with Home Shake these days. Uh, we're finally getting around to touring the new record. We waited a couple months, and now we're doing it. And are you happy with how Fresh Air came out? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah. How do you like playing? How do you like playing the new songs? Oh, it's good because you get real tired of old ones. It's nice to kick a few of those off the set and replace it with some new stuff. And what was what was the vibe like? What, what were you? What records were inspiring you during the recording of that album? Uh, I was listening to a lot of J-pop, you know, a lot of like Taiko Onuki and Ruchi Sakamoto and stuff. Um, you want like specific ones? Yeah, give us an album title that, that really jumps out. It. I don't know. Let's just go with Sun Shower, Taiko okay. Onuki. 77. Sunshower? Yeah, it's got like the happiest song I've ever heard in my life on it. What tracks then? Oh, I don't know. It's in Japanese. It's in <laughs> Japanese? Yeah, and like the, like, or actually that song might have an English title, but it's the second track. I don't know. It's like the happiest song I've ever heard in my life. So it would make me feel really good. I'd like walk down the street listening to it, and then it put me in a good mood for recording my sad, depressing songs. The record, I mean, the record's very pleasant sounding. Not Sun Power, oh, but, but you're... Yeah, fresh airs are very. Uh, I was, you know, a little happier when I was writing this one than the other ones. Like less, less stressed out, concerned about things. So it was like easier to write, I guess. So what's um, what about today? Give us a good record that we today we can listen to. Yeah. Oh, what's our new Kendrick? New Kendrick came out yesterday. Yes, that it's just amazing. Last night, yeah. yeah. Damn, it's good. Is it that good? It's very good. Listen to it twice on the way here from Seattle. Really? Yeah. And what's what about the song? He did a song with Rihanna, right? On it. How's that's that? A, that's a banger. It's Is really it good. good. I really like the song with Rihanna. The one with you two. <laughs> Self sound. I mean, I just wouldn't have invited Bono into my studio, but that's cool. <laughs> it's still cool to have a song featuring you two. It's pretty interesting co collaboration. Yeah. Like mean. it's a great song. It's just you know Bono. Yeah. yeah, he's. We had this debate in the car, funny, on, on the way here, but you know he's Bono, right? He's Bono, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, almost. And he's Kendrick, he can do whatever he wants. That's great. It's a great album, though. Any, any records that should be part of everyone's collection? Um, yeah, that live Curtis Mayfield record, Curtis slash live. That's like, it's like, the, it's like a perfect performance of some of the most beautiful music ever. Any track, what track highlights? I like uh, Stare and Stare a lot on that one. It's about people sitting on the bus and not chatting. Like I wouldn't want to chat with someone on the bus, yeah. ironically enough, but I think it's a good message. <laughs> That's not so ironic. I mean, who, who wants to... Yeah, but then the song is about how we're all... I guess it's like using that as like a metaphor for just like people being separated from one another. And that's in the 70s, which is way crazier now. Yeah. No one talks. Well, it meant, I mean, obviously... It was Everybody I know is just times. like a name in my phone and like some text written on after it. I know we don't. We, uh, do you know your? Do you know any of your close friends' numbers? Because that's like... It, no, I remember a, my close friends from like junior high's yeah. phone numbers. I remember my parents' phone number, like from or like my house when I was growing up, but I do not know. Oh, I know, I know my partner's number. I know her number. That's good. That, that's a nice. You'll have to take my word for it. I'm not that, going to nice tell you. What was the first album you bought as a kid? I'm not. It could be one of two. It's either Tragic Kingdom by No Doubt or Clumsy by Our Lady Peace. I can't remember which one. I was thinking about this the other day. I'm pretty sure it was Clumsy. I feel like Our no Lady, doubt. Lady Peace. Like one of them I bought and one of them I like pulled off my older sister's floor. That's how I heard most of the music I 
first like listened to when I was like a seven year old. That's valid. I and mean, it's good to get some Canadian. We are we are filming in Canada, so it's nice to get yeah. some Canadian uh, piece. Yeah, yeah. Was there an album that inspired you to start playing music? Um, I don't know. That's tough because I kind of never had anything else going on. Like I was never there was never like a eureka moment where I was suddenly like, oh, I should play music. It was like the only thing I've ever had on my mind my entire life. Ever since I like was dragged to a piano lesson when I was four years old, crying. <laughs> Like, after that, it was all good. And then it was the only thing I really liked doing. And the only thing I was ever really good at doing, or cared to try to do, maybe. But early on, I was very influenced by a lot of, like, jazz piano, like, solo jazz piano was kind of the thing that got me, I think, when I was really young, like, Thelonious Monk or something like that. I remember falling asleep listening to Kind of Blue by Miles Davis, like, every day when I was, like, when you were that young, you, you were listening to Miles and Thelonious when you were like five and six. Yeah, maybe like ten, or eleven. Ten, eleven. Yeah. Okay, sorry, Herbert. That's pretty. That's, that's cool. pretty. Yeah, good, well, it, that's pretty cool. Man. Yeah, but I was also listening to like Corn and Limp Bizkit. So. <laughs> no, but that's good. You had a balance. That's a nice yeah. balance. I, I mean, had some angst. So let's let's uh, go. It's a kind of a tough question. Um, the last one. If there was a record. There's a record you've been searching for, for off the top of your head, that's something you've always wanted to own, and it's eluded you. Something, something you've looked for on vinyl, and you haven't been able to locate it. Um, Controversy by Prince. I've never walked into a store and found a copy of that. There can't be, like, it can't just, I think it's probably just a coincidence, like a bad fate. That can't be that rare a record, right? I don't know. Did they press? Maybe they didn't press. What year did that come out? I don't know. Maybe there wasn't. Maybe there <laughs> I'm wasn't. I'm not a really lot. like a record mind. Yeah. I don't really have a. No, I'm just saying because it came out later. Because vinyl, when vinyl started slowing yeah. down, you know, I they can't remember. Press, it came out either. A lot. It was like. I can't remember if it was before or after the self-titled and Dirty Mind. It was like early '80s. Thank you very much uh, for doing this, Pete. Any? Yeah, no problem. Do you want to give us any final words um, uh, of wisdom or messages for the World Wide Webs? No. You got to give us give us something. I have to. You have to tell tell it your parents you love them. Yeah, it doesn't have to be wise. Uh, I advice. told my I already told my parents I love them today. Because right. we had dinner. He just sort of did that. I just took my parents to ramen and it was tasty. that video do us a favor and share it with your friends leave us a comment subscribe too